soccer game between France and Germany. The French president, Francois Hollande, in attendance. The AP reporting there were suicide bombers outside the stadium. You could hear it right there as the game was going on. Two more attacks in central Paris in the 10th and the 11th arrondissements at restaurants in that area. Gunmen with Kalashnikovs reported and killing several on the scene and the most horrifying attack of all at the Bataclan concert hall where an American heavy metal band was playing tonight. Hundreds inside, several hundred were held hostage for Germany a period alone of time. alone takes in 800,000. Months ago, ISIS promised to exploit the migrant crisis to infiltrate thousands of terrorists into Europe. But don't worry, they'll be well looked after. If Sweden enacts what some of its political class are calling for, jobs, welfare and housing for Islamic state jihadists, all at taxpayer expense. So while European citizens are being frisked at airports every single day, potential terrorists are being invited straight in with no security checks, no ID checks, nothing. And in the name of diversity, when they we're welcoming into your odds. And what was the cause of this crisis in the first place? And I've said this so many times that it seems almost cliched at this point. But the media still never mentions it. They act as if this crisis just emerged out of nowhere. It began after NATO governments armed and funded jihadist rebels in Libya and Syria, many of whom went on to join ISIS. If you keep destabilizing secular governments in the Middle East and trying to replace them with jihadists, the wave of legitimate migrants trying to escape that turmoil will never end. Shalom, shalom, and welcome to Seeking Truth in Torah Ministry. I am Yosef Ben Avram, and you have joined us for a new teaching called The Reviving of the Roman Empire, the final plan of Hasatan. And I believe that it is his final, final plan before he tries to execute uh, the time of the anti Messiah. But before we get into it, I'd just like to share something with you. The aim of this teaching is to shed some light on current world situations and help you see the truth. Because you know the Bible says that we are called upon by Yeshua to expose the workers of darkness for what they really are. And now before I go on, there are a lot of well-meaning people on the internet that are saying that ISIS is part of God's judgment. And they seem to draw a parallel to scriptures found in Isaiah chapter 10. When I had a look at it, in reality these scriptures have no prophetic significance to the days we are alive in as those scriptures have already been fulfilled. And I sat with a lot of things that, I, that I've been asking the Father um, about events that have been taking place in the world, and it was like clear as day, he, he just gave me that, that introduction, the reviving of the Roman Empire. And I went and I did some, some study on it, and this is what the Father has laid upon my heart. So I pray that it will bless you. It's not going to be like a normal teaching, but I believe that God's Word is 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 telling us um, prophetically um, about these things. So we're going to take a look at, at a few different areas and we're going to delve into it and I hope that it will help you to see um, what is actually going on and how the enemy is trying to cover up his tracks as he moves um, towards a one world government. So before we start, let's just pray. Father, we want to thank you that you have given us, Father, the ability through your Spirit, Abba Father, to understand all things. And Yahweh, that you said that we are to study, to show ourselves approved, and that in these last days, Father, that there will be a great deception on the earth. But Father, those who are walking by your truth, those who walk by your light, Father, they will understand, and they will be, as it says in the book of Daniel, they will shine, Father, bright, and they will lead many to the truth. And Father, that is what you have called us to do. Father, you have called us to proclaim the word of truth, but at the same time, Father, you have called us to to expose the works of darkness and father to reveal the truth as we continue ever father to do your work and as we continue to serve you i pray yahweh that we will be a people father ready for your soon return and that we will walk and that we will talk and that we will do as you desire us to do and we thank you in the wonderful name of yeshua mashiach amen now, the question I'd like to answer for you is, do I believe that ISIS is a tool of Yahweh? To be honest with you, no, I don't. But let me explain why. 
I, I, I believe that with that said, I believe that ISIS is a tool of Satan. And that because of man's disobedience, many people are falling into the trap that Satan is setting. And they are being destroyed by this evil um, that, is, that is now um, bringing about its head, if I have to say, through ISIS that is sweeping across the earth. And you know, those that are truly in Yeshua will be safe. But those that are, are not, they will be exposed to our Satan. And you know, our Satan has no regard, brethren, for anyone. His aim is to take as many people to hell as he possibly can. And you know, the world elite, brethren, have sold themselves, as we know, to the enemy. And they are fulfilling with great urgency his end time plan with both zeal. And the question is why? Why is all this happening, you might be asking? And you know, I hope to show you why. And in the end, you'll be able to better understand the days you are alive in. And also the need for you and I, brethren, as I said, to be a light that needs to shine and to be alert as we live in this dark time. Now, the aim of this teaching is that we will take a look at various things, but we'll focus mainly on the book of Daniel to get a better understanding of what is about to come on this earth and why the current events that have been happening are all being used to fulfill the global plan of the elite, namely, as I've said, to have a one world government so that the stage can be set for our Satan to finally sit on his throne and eventually proclaim himself to be Yahweh. That's his desire, that's been his plan from the very beginning. And that's why it says throughout the book of, of Isaiah, it says that you exalted yourself, you tried to exalt yourself above the throne of Yahweh. So, what we need to understand is that ISIS, brethren, ISIS is a tool in the hands of the world elite. And why and, and how can I say that? Well, let me show you. Let me show you what um what what is factual and let me give you some 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 factual things to prove my point. Alright, let's take a look. Now that says the following in one of the articles that I found, it says the war on terror, that campaign without end, launched fourteen years ago by George Bush, is trying itself up in ever more grotesque contortions. On Monday, the trial in London of a Swedish man, Berlin Gildo, accused of terrorism in Syria, collapsed after it became clear British intelligence had been arming the same rebel groups the defendant was charged with supporting. <laughs> Nothing new. Let's go on. The prosecution abandoned the case apparently to avoid embarrassing the intelligence services. The defense argued that going ahead with the trial would have been an affront to justice when there was plenty of evidence the British state was itself providing extensive support to the armed Syrian opposition. They didn't only include the non-lethal assistance boasted um, of by the government, including body armor and military vehicles, but training, logistical support, and secret supply of arms on a massive scale. Reports were cited that MI6 had cooperated with the CIA on a rat line of arms transfers from Libyan stockpiles to the Syrian rebels in 2012, after the fall of the Gaddafi regime. Let's go on. Then I found the following... Um, a newly classified U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency called the DIA report confirms that the U.S. and other Western governments allied themselves with Al-Qaeda and other Islamic extremist groups to our Syrian dictator Bashir al-Assad. They expected the consequences of this tactic would lead to the rise of an Islamic state. So they knew that their actions would cause the rise of an Islamic state. Judicial Watch obtained the previously marked secret DIA documents from August 2012, which show these supporting powers wanted a salif, uh, or Salafist principality to emerge to isolate the Syrian regime. And the goal was to topple the Syrian dictatorship had such a high priority that these supporting powers continued to give comprehensive aid to opposition forces. The probability of a unifying of terrorist organizations in the form of a declared Islamic State didn't halt the plans. As the documents show, the intelligence community predicted the development of a proxy war due to the support of Assad's Syrian regime from Russia, China and Iran. Further, the documents show Al-Qaeda in Iraq, AQI, had supported Syrian opposition from the beginning due to Assad's perceived targeting of Sunnis. The insurgency was attracting secretarian volunteers throughout the region. The differentiation was given to the characteristics of those sects which naturally included Islamic extremists. So, brethren, 
just from these sources alone, we can see that the Western governments and world powers, they created ISIS as a tool for what? For their own purpose. Putting in proxy um, things to create a proxy war so that it would support a side Syrian regime. In the end, hopefully, that it would bring it to a fall. But they actually knew that this would create an Islamic state. So this tool was for their own purpose. And we also need to show, let me show you, that all secret services and government agencies are created for the purpose of control. And they were formed by the world elite. Let me show you. There you see the Committee of the 300, the British East India Company, which many of you know, which brought in uh, uh, opium. We go on to the right-hand side, we get the UN, the US National Recon uh, Reconnaissance. Go down and you see there, what, what do you see? You see the MI6, the England Intelligence. Further down, you'll find right at the bottom, just at the there, you find, you find CIA, MK Ultra, a uh, University uh, Rochester, and 85 other universities. Brethren, these guys control everything. That's just a fact, right? And their aim is to bring in this world power. You know, brethren, Satan has a huge agenda, and he's been busy doing his homework since the beginning of time. And we, you know, we so quickly forget the Tower of Babel, and the desire to have a united world under Nimrod. Nothing has changed. It's only gotten worse. So why would the world elite create such a wicked force is maybe the, uh, the question that you're asking. And the answer is simple. Simply because they want control of power. And the aim is to bring chaos and out of it they will create an order. They will create an order. That's their, that's their aim. That's their motto. And they desire to bring total chaos. Why? So that in the end there can be a time of false peace. And the world, before the world buys into having this false peace, they have to first buy into the agenda which is created by the world elite. And the world has to give up its freedom in exchange for security. And believe me, it will be a false security at that. And the world powers will use the world chaos to their gain to prove to the ordinary citizen that they need to be protected in truth from a monster that was actually created by the world powers. You know, this might all sound strange to you. But I hope to bring things to light for you. As stated, we are called to be those of the light and not of the darkness. This is not the judgment of Yahweh. It's the plan of a sick society controlled by evil hearts and given over to our Satan, the prince of the age. And he is using the world elite in exchange for power and greed. And his aim is to establish, as I said, a united world where everyone has to worship who? Him. They have to worship Him. His aim, as I said in the beginning of this teaching, is to revive the Roman Empire, the old Babylonian system as it was in the days of Nimrod. And believe me, brethren, it is on the horizon. The world elite are not dumb. And this is something that we need to remember as we uncover the truth. They have been at this for years, and they will continue till they succeed. And believe me, succeed they will, until the overthrow the overthrowing of our Satan himself when Messiah Yeshua returns. But until that time, they will continue to create this one world government and they will succeed in doing what they want in order to get the prince of the air, our Satan himself, to sit on that throne as the anti-Messiah. Now, as I said, they've been at this for years. But what we need to take a look at is that how do we know how do we know all of this? Because the Bible tells us that these things need to take place. And we will look, as I said to you, at the book of Daniel. And we will look at his vision and how the events that you are seeing today is all a build-up to a final showdown between who? Between good and evil. Between Yahweh and Asatan. There is only the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. There is no in-between. You either serve the kingdom of darkness or you are serving the kingdom of light. And if you haven't accepted Messiah Yeshua into your life, then you are possibly serving the kingdom of darkness without you even knowing it. So like I said, there's the New World Order's symbol and Novus Ordo Seclorium means out of chaos we will bring order. Now in order for us to understand the intensity of the world elite, we need to understand that they are not one specific group. They are made up of various groups. And, and how do I know this? Well, 
because I know that 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 there are many different things as we have studied and as I have studied. And I bring this in because you know there are so many people who are always skeptical. They always ah, but you know this is just conspiracy theory. And what's this all going to do with me? But let's have a look at how many different things throughout history have been um, infiltrated and affected by the world elite. All right. The first one that I would like to look at is the Knights Templar from way back when. The second one is the Committee of the 300, made up of the B'nai B'rith, which is the Jewish sect of this um, entire brotherhood, if I have to say so. Then we have the Illuminati. The Illuminati is formed from without Freemasonry. It is an order within an order. We have the Scottish Rite of the Masonic Order, where we have the top there of the birds with the number 32. We have the Palladian Rite on the left hand with the gentleman at the bottom. We have the Round Table. I'm sure many of you have heard that. The Council of Foreign Relations is another one. The League of Nations. The Bilderbergs. The Trilateral Commission. The United Nations. The European Union. The World Constitution. The Club of Rome. The Environmental Protection Agency, and the last one that I want to bring to your attention is one that is hotly debated, the Skull and Bones, right at the bottom, 322, two, where most of the American presidents have come from. It's a Yale University, um, I think, it, yeah, it is Yale, it's a Yale University secret society. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger himself belongs to it. Take a look at his belt, whenever you look and you'll see him, he has the skull and bones. All right, now let's try to define and unravel the current events in France and Germany and much of the European Union. As many of you know, at present, there is a migrant crisis that is taking over Europe. As many migrants into Greece from Syria and then begin to make their way up into Germany. And we know from the news that it was the German Chancellor um, Merkel that opened the gates to allow for all Europe to accept the influx of migrants. And as stated before, before, these world powers do not do anything out of chance. No, they don't. Everything is calculated and precise, and they know from history the outcomes. They know exactly what happened before. So let's take a look to see if what is happening in Europe has not actually happened before in history. Now... I found the following and I'll read it to you. All right. There is much the ancient world can teach us. One of the key lessons is that mass migration motivated by war, societal collapse and or extreme poverty is capable of destroying even the most powerful of empires. At its height, the Roman Empire was so vast and powerful, it was run on the basis of dictum Roma locota est which means Rome has spoken, the cause is finished. And the names of its most powerful figures are familiar to us as of our very own even today. Pompey, Caesar, Augustus, Nero, Hadrian, Vesapian, Constantine. Men whose rule over the ancient world was so dominant that the only threat they faced came from within Rome itself. Indeed, it would have been the very definition of insanity to claim that, the, that an empire stretching from the Italian peninsula all the way across across Western Europe and down into North Africa and the Middle East, enforced by legions whose very presence in the field of battle induced terror in any army unwise enough to challenge its writ. Yet in 476 CE, what was then known as the Western Roman Empire came to an end after a century of successive barbarian invasions finally succeeded in bringing Rome to its knees. The symbols of its power in the form of the emperor's imperial vestments, diadem and purple cloak were sent to Constantinople, the seat of power of the eastern half of the empire to bring the curtain down on its 1,000 year history. It was proof that no empire, regardless of its economic and military power, lasts forever. Brethren, we need to see the truth here for a second. The current migrant crisis is being used, brethren, by the world elite to bring Europe to a tipping point. Not only will radical Islamists enter in and continue to wreak havoc, but we know that all Islam will never accept a Western agenda. So do the world powers. They know that if Islamic people come into their country, there is no way that those Islamic people will accept a Western way of religion. No. So what has to happen? The entire country has to reform. And they are up for that. Why? Because then they can institute their power and they can exert their power and then they can bring forth this new world order so the aim of the world elite is to bring to an end what was started right in the beginning with the bombing of the world trade center 
And the next on the agenda is Operation Phoenix. Go and have a look for yourself. They believe in the resurrection coming, the next operation after um, the 9-11. The 9-11 instituted world terror. And now the next plan is to institute this agenda called Operation Phoenix, the resurrection of the beast. They want to bring in the anti-Messiah, which is the next part of what they call the Aquarian Age. The one they think is their Messiah, which is actually Satan himself. And the aim is to bring about chaos and in the end to introduce a peace that only they can control. Remember, out of chaos comes order and they are the ones that will only be able to control this chaos. As more and more attacks take place in and across Europe, and as Europe falls into the hands of radical Islamists, the inhabitants of these countries, they will begin to give up their freedom just like we saw in 9-11, where people will begin to say, hey, you know what, we need more protection, we need more policing, we need more um, um, uh, 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 scanners and things at our airports, we need these things. But it will begin to be used, what, against the people. We know that that's what it says in the Word of God. And countries will give up their freedom for more policing and more control, thereby uniting the nations with what one cause and resulting in the formation of the revived Roman Empire or better yet the fourth Reich or the Empire of the final anti-Messiah let me explain better to you so that you can understand and and in order to understand what I'm trying to say we need to take a concise look at that specific um, that specific order that specific secret society called the skull and bones society now, the New World Order could not have been realized had it not been for the intensive activities of various secret societies, as stated before, and I've named them for you. But one of them is the worldwide secret society. It's called the Brotherhood of Death. It's the Death Society, whose symbol is the skull with the two crossed bones on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, the German Brotherhood of Death Society is the opposite one, and it's also based on the same principles, but it's called the Thule Society. The Thule Society. Now, Adolf Hitler, he joined the society in 1919 and he became a skillful um, leader under the leadership of Dietrich Eckhart. And later the Thule Society selected Hitler to be their leader of a new world order as Eckhart revealed on his deathbed the following. This is what he said. Listen carefully. Following Hitler he will dance, but it is I who have called the tune. I have initiated him into the secret doctrine, opened the centers in vision, and given him the means to communicate with the powers. What powers? The demonic powers. That's what he said. Then we, we need to skip forward. In August of 1990, President George Bush announced that the world had now entered into a new world order. And you know what? Bush comes from the same skilled brotherhood of the Death Society. He came through the Yale Skull and Bone Society, the 322 order. Now remember that all members of the American Skull and Bones are just as satanic brethren in their beliefs as Adolf Hitler was. They all believe the same thing. And the belief system is one of depravity and it is one of satanic worship. Now I want you to remember something. Remember that Yahweh warns us repeatedly that at the end of the age he is going to allow Satan's people to carry out the most successful deception in world history. The author Ravenscroft stated that indulgence in the most sadistic rituals awaken penetrating vision into the workings of evil intelligences and bestowed phenomenal magical powers. That's the aim. But you know, glory be to Yahweh that not every single person on this planet is blinded by the things that they're doing. But the Bible says, he who stays in darkness shall what? Fall under the deception of the world powers. And ultimately you're falling under the deception of our, son, uh, our Satan himself. That's why we need to be a people of prayer. That's why we need to be a people that do the things that Yahweh says. Stop casting judgment. See it for what it is and start to work according to Yahweh's plan. Do what Yahweh wants us to do. To reveal the truth to people. To expose the works of darkness. To create and, and do the great commission and to fulfill His mission in these final days. Now brethren, what we need to understand is that the world is looking. They are looking for a man or a person to be a spiritual superman. We see it in all the movies. We see it in all the superhero movies. We see it in all the things that, that Hollywood propagates and pushes into our faces. That there always has to be chaos, but there is always going to be a hero. Someone that comes into the story and fixes it for us. But the members of the Thule Society believed 
Also, in communication with a hierarchy of supermen, the secret chiefs of the Third Order. Demons? That's who they believed they were speaking to. Not secret chiefs, they're demons. And the quality which make these beings supermen was a cultic spirituality, like I said. Eckhart believed that he had been told by his guiding spirit he would have the privilege of training the coming great one, the Antichrist. And we know from scripture that in 1 John it says that there has been many Antichrists, many people who have come in the spirit of the Anti-Messiah. Hitler was fulfilling that exact scripture. Same as Nimrod, same as, as, as Pharaoh, same as all those leaders leaders wanting to, to bring about the destruction of Israel, the destruction of Yahweh's people. They operate in the spirit of the anti-Messiah. Now, it's common knowledge that Germany under Adolf Hitler from 1933 to 1944 is referred to as the Third Reich. It is, however, less well known that the First Reich and Second Reich, many people don't even know what they were. And the word Reich is hard to translate to English, but, but it is normally translated as a realm or empire. That would be the best translations. Now the First Reich, brethren, the First Reich was the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Helchis Romaschis Reich Deutsche Nation. Not the ancient Roman Empire. This was around 800 to 1806. Charlemagne, Charles the Great, was crowned emperor by Pope Leo III in Rome on Christmas Day 8. This is normally seen as the founding of the empire, but sometimes the year of 962 is used. That was when Otto I, Otto the Great, was crowned, and the empire existed almost in name only following the peace of Westphalia and the end of the Thirty Years' War in 1648. But was not formally discovered until 6th August 1806 when Emperor Francis, Franz II, abdicated. The Third Reich, brethren, was the Holy Roman Empire disguised and nothing has changed. There's the pictures and, it, and it's proven to you. Brethren, we need to understand that the rise of the Fourth Reich is coming. What we are seeing today in Europe is the cards of the enemy as he begins to move his chess pieces so that the formation of a one world government can be completed and he himself can take the seat on his throne. This is what Europe is working towards. And they are well aware of the dangers that the refugees pose to their national security. But as we stated, Satan does not care. He doesn't care about human life and neither do the world powers. All they care about is getting the job done. And Satan's main strategy now is to instill fear and chaos on the earth. So that from out of this fear and chaos, order can come. And a false peace can be initiated that we need to take notice of when it comes. Let's take note and have a look now at the vision of Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel chapter 28 to 45. And, and in order for us to understand the days ahead, we need to understand what he sees. Now in Daniel chapter 2 verse 28 it says, But there is a lower in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head on your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came on your bed. What should happen after this? And the revealer of secrets makes known to you what shall come to pass. But as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living man. But so that the meaning might be known to the king and that you might know the thoughts of your heart. And then he goes on. And in verse 31 he says, You, O king, were seeing, and behold, a certain great image. The great image stood before you with a brilliant brightness, and its form was terrifying. The head of its image was with fine gold. Its breast and its arms were with silver. Its belly and its thighs were of bronze. Its legs were of iron, and its feet were partly of iron and partly of clay. You continued until a stone was cut out with hands, which struck the image on its feet of clay, iron and clay, and broke them into pieces, talking about the Messiah that will destroy this final Antichrist king kingdom. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were together crushed to pieces, and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away so that no place was found for them. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the meaning of it before the king. You, O king, are the king of kings. For the Elo, Elho of heaven has been given you, has given you the kingdom, the power and the strength and the honor. And wherever the sons of men, the animals of the field and the birds of the sky dwell, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. Take note. He, Babylon, is the head of gold. 
And in your place shall rise another kingdom lower than yours, and another third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule in all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, inasmuch as iron crushes and smashes all things. And as the iron shatters all these, it will crush and shatter. And as you that saw... The feet and the toes were partly of potter's clay and partly of iron. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in its strength of iron, because you saw the iron mixed with clay of the potter. And as of the toes um, of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And as you saw the iron mixed with the clay of clay, they shall be mixed with the seed of men, but they shall not adhere to one another, even as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the Elho of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall crush in pieces and make an end of all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Talking about the eternal kingdom of Yahweh at the end of days, the eternal kingdom of Yeshua at the end of days. Because you saw that the stone was cut out from the mountain without hands, and that it w broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold in pieces, the great Elohim has made known to the king what shall occur after this. And the dream is certain, and the meaning of it is trustworthy. Now, brethren, we first need to take note of the various empires in order to understand what is going on in this passage of scripture. We need to understand the seven evil kingdoms from the beginning of time. Revelation chapter 17 verse 9 says, Here is the mind having wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains where the woman sits on them. And the, se and the kings are seven. The five fell and the one is. The other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain a little. Now let's take note of these seven kingdoms. The first one was the evil kingdom in Babylon. After that, we know that Babylon was destroyed by Egypt. And, and Egypt supplanted Babylon during the time of Joseph in 1850 BC. You read that in Genesis chapter 47. Then the third kingdom was Assyria who exploited Egypt's weakness and came to power in 12,000 BC. The fourth one was the revised Babylon, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar, and like Nimrod, this king tried to subjugate Yahweh to man by assimilating him into this one world system. The fifth one is Medo-Persia. It was led by Cyrus, followed by Darius, who eventually killed King Nebuchadnezzar. We also know the sixth one was Greece, and it rose to a power, such a great power, under Alexander the Great, who eventually split, split it up and gave it to his four generals. And the seventh one is Rome. It is replacing Greece, the seventh one. Brethren, let's take a look at this last evil kingdom. Let's take a look at this last evil kingdom. The last kingdom is represented by the feet of clay and the ten toes. And this is a kingdom the Bible says that is yet to come. It is the kingdom that represents, brethren, the reviving of Rome. And the Bible says that the world at this time will be divided into ten sections. And the leaders of each of these sections will give their power over to the beast. The beast that comes out of the sea. And these seven kingdoms have many things in common, including what brought, sorry, what brought um, on their own downfall. One of them is pride. And when each kingdom grew in power, they would confront who? They would confront Yahweh's people. Each of these kingdoms was a tool in the hand of who? Of a Satan to bring what? Destruction against Yahweh's people. And we know that Yahweh has always protected his two children. While Satan's plan has been subjugation, destruction and deportation. Let's have a look at how far this plan of the enemy has actually come. Let's take a look at... Pardon me, let me, let me show you this again, alright? So we said the first evil kingdom is Babylon. Then we said the second one, just for your notes so that you can have it, is Egypt. Then we said Assyria. Then we said revised Babylon under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar. Medo-Persia led by Cyrus and Greece, which rose to power under Alexander the Great. And the final one is the revived Rome, alright? And here we have the following. This comes from the Club of Rome, which is also the Trilateral Commission. They have already divided the planet into ten administrative regions. And their plan is to choose five cities as world capitals and one city to be what? The supreme capital of the world. The place where the anti-Messiah will sit. So region one will be the United States, Canada and Mexico. Region two, the entire Western Europe. Region three, Japan. Region four, Australia and New Zealand. And actually South Africa falls into region four too. 
Region 5, Eastern Europe. Region 6, Latin America. Region 7, North Africa and the Middle East. Region 8, Main Africa. Region 9, South and Southeast Asia. And then finally we have Region 10, which is Central Asia. Revelation says this. It says, and then the ten horns you saw, ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. Because why? Because the final kingdom of the revived Roman Empire has not yet been, um, been, been created. They are in the process of making these ten nations. They are in the process of, 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 of destroying the borders and making ten nations so that these ten kings can sit upon them. And then it says, and then it says, it says clearly, it says, what you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but will receive authority as kings one hour with the beast. One hour, remember one day is like a thousand years, so, so take note of that, right? Those, and then it says, these have one mind, and their power and authority they shall give up to the beast. They give their authority to him, and these will make war with the lamb, with Yeshua himself. And the lamb, hallelujah, the lamb will overcome them. Because he is master of masters and king of kings. And the one with him are all, sorry, are the called and chosen and faithful ones. Now, let's have a look, alright. We need to understand that the kingdoms of this world are under Satan until the time of the fulfillment of scripture. Why? Because they have chosen to enter into covenant with him instead of entering into covenant with Messiah Yeshua. Revelation 11.5 says, And the seventh cherub trumpeted, and there was a great rumbling and thunder saying, The kingdoms of this world have become our Elohims, even of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. When, he, when this takes place, brethren, when this takes place, Yeshua will be the one that will come and usher in his millennial reign. We also need to remember that Satan, he cannot create. There is nothing new to his plan. He is just continuing on a path of destruction with one goal, to have his own bride. But the difference is that he does not love his bride. His aim is to take as many to hell with him as he can in the final days. And we know that the world is Babylon. And that in the end, it will once again become great. We know that, that there will be a woman riding on the beast. Remember Babylon. And we know that in the eyes of man, that, that this, this kingdom looks great. But we also know that all the wicked, all the wicked will give their power over to the beast. And eventually then he will establish his throne in Jerusalem. And he sits there and he does what? He pronounces himself as Yahweh. But glory, you know what? Glory be to Yeshua, that we are not of those who live in darkness. He shall be defeated, as the scripture says, by Yeshua, and we will stand with our King in victory. Brethren, this is all to open your eyes, so that you can see with clarity what Satan is doing. Let's wake up and become the children of light in this generation. Yahweh wants all men to be saved, and Satan wants to destroy as many as he can. So again, is ISIS Yahweh's judgment? I believe it's more the satanic tool of the enemy to bring about his end time kingdom. The reason why so many people are falling prey to it is why? Because of their own wickedness within their hearts. Man does not want to serve Yahweh. Instead, they want to serve the enemy. So in conclusion, the refugee crisis, brethren, is a tool of globalists to destabilize the West and help usher in a global peace and police state. And you know what? Again, the goal is a global, one-world economic system. We know that the Federal Reserve has taken the U.S. and European economies to the brink of collapse. And the only thing that globalists can do to circumvent this inevitable collapse is to create global panic, global war, and a global police state. We need to understand, too, that the vast majority of refugees that have come over the borders are not terrorists. They are not. They have been persecuted and they are, uh, many of them are Muslims. Many of them are also Christians. And the truth is that they are literally fleeing their lives. But there is no question that the CIA-backed Sunni terrorists have infiltrated these refugees. The attacks in Paris were not committed necessarily by refugees. They were committed by CIA-backed, Saudi-backed, even Turkey-backed, MI-16-backed as we saw. The world leader-backed terrorists which, as we said, all find their roots in global elite plan. I believe that the Paris attacks and the refugee crisis, ISIS, and a world on the verge of global war, it's all a manipulated contravenance of the global elite to, to in, infuse or to, to dominate their power and to steal the freedom of people so that their one world government can arise. 
we mustn't be fooled. We mustn't be fooled and we mustn't see it in the way that the world wants us to see it. In the end, it's a fight against light and darkness. It is the enemy playing his cards. He's playing them because he knows his time is coming soon to an end. And glory be to Yahweh. It is the will of God that, that we should see these things. It's the will of Yahweh so that we can see them and not be caught unawares. 1 John 2 verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you heard that the anti-Messiah is coming, even now many anti-Messiahs have risen up, from which you know that it is the last hour. Brethren, I urge you, we need to wake up and we need to, we need to see that, we need to, we need to understand what is, what is God's judgment upon this earth, what is man's own wicked heart, what is God's judgment upon the righteous because, or, or upon the house of Elohim because they are not doing what He says. We need, to, we need to get busy doing what our Father says. And if we are unable to discern, we would stop passing judgment. And, and what I'm trying to say, let, let, let me break it up like this. What I'm trying to say is this. We need to stop passing judgment and start getting busy with the things that Yahweh wants us to do. Stop looking and stop saying, oh, but this could be that or this could be that. Instead, let's begin to be the army of Yeshua. We know these things are going to happen. We know the world is in a mess. We know the world is going to be turned upside down. So let us also not forget that judgment begins in the house of Elohim first. Let us clean our own houses and may we live for Him. I pray that this teaching has blessed you. I pray that this opened your eyes a little bit to what I believe is going on and how the enemy is trying to disguise and how he's trying to, to close it over. Let's pray. Father Yahweh, we want to come to you and we want to give you praise. We want to thank you, Yahweh, that you have given us your spirit. And in your word, you said that your spirit will guide us into all truth. Father, I pray that you will guide us into all truth, that we will not be caught, Father, unaware by all the things that are happening upon this earth, but, Father, that we will see it for what it is. And, Yahweh, that in this generation that you will raise up prayer warriors, Father, people who will stand in the gap and pray, and, Father, that will see the enemy when he comes in like a flood. Father, we pray that you will raise up a standard in the lives of your believers in the name of Yeshua. And, Father, I pray that every person listening to this teaching, Father, that your glory and your presence will be upon them. And Father, that they will grow, that they will mature. And Father, that they will know you in the beauty of holiness. And Father, that they will become that end time remnant that you have called them to be, standing up for your truth in this generation. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.